Now let's take a next question that is question number 16. The question you see here belongs to section mechanics from chapter gravitation. As per the question there are four identical particles of mass capital M each and they are located at corners of a square of side A. What should be their speed if each of them revolves under the influence of others gravitational field in a circular orbit circumscribing the square and these are the options given for the velocity. Now in order to understand the particular case we need a diagram so I have already made one for you. Let's start with the solution. So I have four masses 1, 2, 3, 4 right. Now I am taking this as a subject for now. So all the three rest of the masses will be applying some force here, right? So this will be applying force F. This will be applying force F. Now why both will be same? Because the masses are same and the distance is same as per the question. It's a square. So all the sides will have same distance. The force by this one would be F dash. Now what is the angle between them? This is 90. The idea would be that if it is revolving with some velocity v, it will have a centrifugal force mv square by r, the radius. What would be the radius? I am taking this as the radius small r, right? So now, whatever net force is acting on this mass is on this direction will be equal to the value of mv square upon r, centrifugal force. Thus, it remains balanced along this axis. So, first of all, what is the net force acting on the mass? So solving this you will get F is equals to G M square by A square and F dash would be G M square upon root 2 A whole square. Now why root 2 A because if this is A and this is A both are perpendicular this will be the hypotenuse that is equals to A root 2. So solving this you will get the net force on M as 2 F cos of 90 by 2 plus f dash why is it so if you see the mass m one force is acting like this the other being like this and they are at 90 degree with each other and one force is acting on them as f dash so these two forces if the resultant is taken it will be along this direction which will be 2 f cos of 90 by 2 right so the net force acting on this mass would be some of these two forces so i have mentioned it here now when you solve this further down you will get f net as root 2 g m square by a square plus g m square by 2 a square so this will be g m square divided by a square into root 2 plus 1 by 2 this is the net force which is acting on that mass towards the right and this force should be equal to mv square upon r. Now what is the radius of this circle? If you see the radius it would be equal to a by root 2 because this whole distance is a root 2 that is divided by 2 for the radius. So putting down the values here you will get mv square by a by root 2 is equals to g m square a square root 2 by 1 by 2 right now when you solve this this will be cancelled out and this a and this will be cancelled out what is left is v is equals to 1.16 under root of g m by a this is our final answer when you solve this one and let's see which is the best suited option here among the four options given to us Option number two is the right answer to this question, right? Now let's move on to our next question. Now the question you see here is the question belonging to chapter electrostatics that is the section of electromagnetism. Here a bob of simple pendulum has mass of 2 grams and a charge of 5 microcoulomb. It is at rest in uniform electric field, horizontal electric field of intensity 2000 volt per meter. At equilibrium, the angle that the pendulum makes with vertical is, right? So, it's a very simple formula based question. We can solve this simply by the help of a diagram. So, first of all, let's take that there's a vertical here. This is the ceiling from which a bob is hanging in this direction, 
this is the bob and there are horizontal electric field lines like this right now these electric field lines will exert a force on this charge that is equals to q into e and one mg will be acting on this downwards this is making an angle theta with the vertical right so when you see from here this and this theta will be equal also a tension will be acting in this direction so there are three forces which are acting on it one is tension one is q one is mg if i draw the free body diagram it is mg this side qe and if i resolve one component would be upwards that is t cos of theta and one component would be here as t sin of theta right because if t is resolved along here there will be sin theta along upside would be t cos theta so on solving this you will get for equilibrium condition you should understand that the net force on this should be zero so t sin theta should be equal to q e and t cos theta should be equal to mg dividing these two you will get tan theta is equals to q into e by mg when you put down the values which is given to you you will simply get 0.5 so let's see which is the best suited option here among the four options which is given to us theta would be tan inverse of 0.5 that is option number four right hope you have understood this one now it's time to move on to our next question so the question you see here belongs to section of mechanics of chapter oscillation and waves here a wire of length 2l is made by joining two wires a and b of same length but different radii they are made of same material it is vibrating at a frequency such that the joint of the two wires forms a node if the number of antinodes in wire a is p and the number of antinodes in wire b is q then we have to find the ratio of p is to q let's start with the solution now here is basically we need to find the ratio of the wavelengths if we find that we can easily find the ratio of that number of antinodes so if you find that velocity of a wave is inversely proportional to linear mass density of the rod or the wires which is there so if i say v a velocity of wave on a to velocity of wave on b can be written as mu b divided by mu a right now if you talk about the linear mass density it is mass per unit length since the length of both is same so it is simply mass of b divided by mass of a and and if you understand that mass can be written as density into cross sectional area into length that is mass into volume divided by again rho pi r a square into l you will find it is simply equal to r b by r a which is equals to 2r divided by r as per the question this is equals to 2 is to 1 so i have found the velocity ratio and definitely it will be equal to lambda a by lambda b that is the ratio of wavelengths would be 2 is to 1 now since they are equal to 2 is to 1 so p is to q will be equal to 1 is to 2 as so let's see which is the best suited option here among the four options given option number two would be the right answer i hope you have understood the question very well now let's take our next question that is question number 19 